Back by popular demand, my Rover SD1. On the driveway this time, it's just got no brakes, so we're going to put on this new master cylinder and see how well they work after that. I've had the SD1 off the road for a little while now because of a problem with the brakes I haven't quite had the money to sort. Basically, the master cylinder that's on it at the minute has a little patch of rust in the bottom right underneath where the seal for the front brake circuit runs. And what happens is every time you press the front brakes, it lets a bunch of brake fluid out from this side into the top side, and then when you lift the piston back up again, it pumps it all back out, out of the brasser cylinder, onto my servo, into my engine bay, everything's sad. So I'm going through fluid at a horrible, horrible rate, I've got really bad brakes, usually only the rear circuit properly working, and it's just all around not a very good idea. So I've got a new master cylinder from Rimmer Brothers, which we're going to put on now, and compare it to the old one, see how much better we end up. So here's a nice view of the problem. The reservoir is split into two sections, secondary at the front and primary at the rear. The secondary side is obviously fine, but the primary side is completely empty, which is an obvious sign of a leak. So here's a bit more evidence of the problem, where the master cylinder has been puking brake fluid out the back. It's actually just taken all of the paint off of my servo, this is run down. Now I don't know what that's done to the paint on the body underneath, I can't really see. It actually doesn't look bad, but I'm kind of hoping it's not worse than it looks. This being a Van Den Pla model, it's the plush luxury version that has all the options. It has cruise control. Unfortunately, it's been broken for probably about five or ten years before I had it. Previous owners disconnected it, and really at this point it's just getting in the way. So I'm just going to nip that out while I'm in here. Now with that out of the way, we've got a bit of room now to put up a nice cardboard shield around the servo. The idea here is there's a seal on the back of the master cylinder that's, that's meant to stop any leaky brake fluid from actually falling out completely. So I'd like to give this a slightly smoother face to go onto because it's all kind of corroded and rough. So we're going to sand that a little, paint it a little, and then get this on. The servo's looking relatively good now. It's not looking great, but it's about as good as we're going to get it in the engine bay. That's all clean, so we'll get the new master cylinder on now, bolt that up, get it all hooked up into the hydraulics. That's all bolted up, so we're just going to spin the car around real quick, drop the passenger side front wheel off, and replace my caliper. There's nothing wrong with the great caliper that's on there already, but the one on the driver's side died a little while ago, and I've noticed since replacing that that it pulls to the right quite hard, so I'm replacing this one as well, just because I think this one's a bit old and a bit sticky. So we'll whiz him off now. One down. Two down. That was easy. There we go. So here's the old caliper. Not a lot to do here, just going to pop these pins out, swap the pads into the new caliper, throw it all back on. The SD1 uses four pot calipers up front, which makes getting the pads out as easy as can be. Just pop the sliders out, remove the spring plates, and the pads fall out. Putting it back together is as simple as throwing the pads in, putting the spring plates back on, and tapping the pins back in as they were, and then you're good to go. Well that was about the easiest thing I've ever done with any brakes, on any car, ever. And by saying that, I've probably just jinxed, my, jinxed myself massively, so we'll see how reassembly goes. Of course, putting stuff back together is never as easy as taking it apart. Alignment can be a pain. The calipers here fit across two metal faces on the back of the hub, and unless the whole stack is aligned to within maybe half a mil or so, the bolt won't thread in. So, after all that positive talk, it turned out, yes, I had massively jinxed myself. While I was trying to line the caliper up, I went and rolled over the top couple of threads on this, using it as a guide pin. So we've just been inside, recut the threads, see if this works now. Feels pretty promising. Easy. Oh, hang on, no, that hadn't actually engaged. <laughs> That's why it was turning easily. There we go. <laughs> yep, 
Is she going? Tough to tell. Doesn't look like it. It should have moved by now, but... Nah. Popping straight back out again. It's just not quite getting onto the thread. Which is annoying because it's really, really close. Like, there's... I can't even get my little finger in what's left of the shank. So it's got to be through this side of the hub. It's got to be through the caliper. And it's got to be basically right up against the end of the thread. It's weird because the other M12 bolt with the same thread as this went straight in. Just a minute ago. Got those both in at last. So uh, I think now we need to get a lot of brake fluid in it. Get a lot of air out. So that's all back on and tightened up. I'm just going to throw the wheel back on, get it all back on the deck, because actually the easiest way to bleed the rear brakes is with all the wheels on, with it at ride height and level. At the minute, with the front corner cranked so hard in the air, we actually can't get in to the rear wheel latch to get to the bleed valve in there. So before we get the pressure bleeder hooked up, I'm just going to fill up most of the reservoir directly. There's no point using pressure for this because it's empty. The pressure bleeder is a pretty simple piece of kit. We got it from Halfords for probably about 20 quid or something. Um, it uses a tyre valve that just goes onto a spare tyre or something to pressurise the bottle that you see hanging up above the engine there. That then forces brake fluid out of the bottle into your reservoir. It's a pretty simple system. And all you do, you undo one bleed valve at a time on the car and the pressure of the tyre forces fluid through out through the whole system. So it saves you having to do the whole up, up, down, down dance. And wow, I could not have got that any closer. Right, so using this thing's pretty simple. We've got the airline running off to our spare tyre out the front. Airline runs into the top, and then in the bottom there's a hose that feeds brake fluid up onto a little uh, screw-on cap that just fits onto the reservoir. Nice and easy. So we're going to crack open our bleed valve at the back, put the air valve on the tyre, and that'll pressurise it and send brake fluid all the way through to the rear wheels. Now that we've cycled through a lot of what's in the bottle here, we're just going to pop the lid off, pour some more in, and carry on. Just screw that off. I'm just going to hang this down the side of the car to not get brake fluid all over my paint. When bleeding brakes, you should always start with the longest line first. In our case, that means bleeding the back, which are daisy chained together, we only need to bleed one caliper to do all of the rear circuit. The front has a T-junction. We do the passenger side, followed by the driver's side. So we've got all the brake lines purged of air now. The pedal feels absolutely rock solid, which is great. So we're going to whiz all this off now. And it's going to get this below the level of the reservoir. So when I pop the cap off, it doesn't go and pour more brake fluid down into here. The only problem with these things is that it does leave the reservoir absolutely full, right up to the brim. So you're pretty much inevitably going to spill some brake fluid. But if you take it off slowly, it does let the air back out. And you can usually, if you're careful, do it clean. Just like that. That went better than I expected. Now that bottle does leave this thing so full that if I put this cap in here now with the level sensor in, it will just overflow out. So I'm just going to syringe a little bit of the fluid in there out and put it... Oh, he says pulling up a, a bunch of air. This is going to take a few goes, I'm just going to put this back in the bottle. I've got brakes again! <laughs> well that's it for today. We've got the new master cylinder on, the new caliper on, the pedal feels great. I'm guessing it probably won't pull right every time I hit the brakes now. The rear brake lines have been purged of air because there's a fair few bubbles in those. I reckon we're all good. I'm actually really happy with that. It went a lot better than our ignition work last time. It stops great now, not as well as a modern car, but it is 35 years old, so, you know, it is what it is. The most important thing for me, though, is it now stops well enough to pass an MOT, and it's got one due real soon, so that's great. One thing we have noticed, though, it picked up a really, really loud hiss. Uh, after we started the car up to test the brakes, 
there's a massive sound of like air rushing in. Somewhere it sounds like a vacuum leak or something from near the servo or near the rear carburetor, but we can't quite place it. Uh, we've sort of felt around and can't see where that's going. So we're gonna have to have some more of that apart. So that might come up in a future episode. I've also got a massive leak out of the radiator. I've known about this for a while. I just haven't got a new rad yet. Rover SC1 radiators are really expensive to get hold of, but I have seen a few people put uh, aluminium radiators out of like Nissan S14s, you know, sort of drift radiators in. They seem like a fairly easy swap. So that's next on my list. And hopefully after that, we'll get some more fun stuff.